Lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. There is a place of interim torment. No, it is not purgatory, a temporary torment, but an interim torment, as it were, a waiting room for the lake of fire. Now, this is very complicated because we can't apply time to eternity. In the book of Revelation, we see past, present, and future are all the same. There's a sequence of events, but they take place out of time. Relative to us, however, we can think of what happens to non-believers when they die. Relative to them, they go to hell. Relative to us, they've gone to the netherworld, Hades. Now, the perfect picture of this is the parable of Lazarus and the rich man. In the netherworld, which the Jews call Sheol, or in Greek, Hades, there was a chasm separating the bosom of Abraham, where the faithful Old Testament saints were waiting for the Messiah to come and atone for their sin, so they could enter heaven. And there was the place of torment. Notice that the rich man who adored Lazarus was being tormented already. They were being tormented already. Uh, when unsaved people die, they go to hell. Now, this teaching that Jesus went to hell and was tormented by Satan, that is propagated by the false money preachers, Joyce Meyer, Kenneth Copeland, the late Kenneth Hagin, people like this who were influenced by E.W. Kenyon. This teaching comes from a mistranslation in the King James Bible where Hades is called hell. The word is not that Jesus descended into hell. He descended into Hades. But they go by the King James instead of the original meaning of the original Greek, and they wind up with the basis for a false doctrine. And they say that Satan got the victory on the cross, not Jesus. Jesus was tortured three days and three nights in hell by Satan, and he had to be born again in hell. First of all, he did not go to hell. He went to Hades. When Jesus gave up the ghost, he revealed himself to the Old Testament saints who were waiting for him to come. Uh, the ultimate hell, the lake of fire, will take place when Jesus returns. Satan, the Antichrist, and false prophet will be tossed into it. It doesn't even per se exist now relative to us. In eternity, it's a different matter. We can't apply time to eternity. But relative to us, its existence is something that is coming. It is not here yet. Now, again, we can't deal with the issues of eternity, where the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Uh, where past events are spoken of in the present tense and future events in the present tense, where past, present, and future are the same. This is another very complicated issue. But understand this. Jesus did not go to hell. He went to Hades, to the netherworld. He was not tortured by Satan. And the cross, he got the victory. He said, it is finished. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Satan did not know that at that point, Jesus atoned for our sin. He thought it was only his own anger and hatred of Jesus causing all of these terrible things to be done to Jesus. He did not know it was God using him as his instrument to judge our sin by putting his sin, putting our sin on his son who had no sin. That's how Jesus got the victory in his death. But then he got the victory in his resurrection when he rose from the dead and Satan realized, as it were, he'd been double-crossed by God. <laughs> Again, this was a gambit. Um, 
the notion that Jesus went to hell is completely and utterly ridiculous. It is not what the original Greek manuscripts teach. It is a perversion by E.W. Kenyon that has been constructed into a twisted fabrication by the money preachers to get money out of people. That's what it is. That's all it is. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless you.